ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد my dear our respected brothers and sisters in islam for the past couple of weeks we've been discussing uh, the sources of unity found in islam sources of unity that bring us together as one community and today inshallah i would like to change the channel just a little bit talking about the muslim community and when we talk about the muslim community as a whole the muslim ummah our international community of muslim brothers and sisters around the world not just looking at our community right here in this center or our neighbor centers or masjids it's important that we keep in mind and remember that we as a community on any scale that we're talking about we are only as strong as the people who make up that community we as a community are only as strong as the members of the community itself so for that reason when you look at the community you see that the first building block of a strong community of a strong muslim umma it begins at its starting point of the family the muslim family it is the first building block to any successful and strong community a community here a community in the united states a community overseas the community of the muslims around the world and for this reason we can find much emphasis being placed on the importance of family in islam in the islamic legislation the laws of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can find the framework of the family that will lead us to success and to a more enjoyable family experience the framework of the family the do's and the don'ts the manners the ways that we go about living with one another as family as relatives is all found within the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam these sources that we have lead us to live a happy family life and after that have a thriving community so keeping this in mind we collectively we are like one body as a community beyond just our family structure what goes on within our own house the things that we do in our own homes the decisions that we make as a husband and wife with children with fathers and mothers with brothers and sisters the decisions that are made in our own homes they do not only affect that which happens in the house but many times they have an effect that goes beyond the house and affects the entire muslim ummah the decisions that we make in our home affect the muslim ummah at large good or bad good decisions bring about good results bad decisions family decisions can bring about detrimental results not only for the family itself but for the umma at large and this is something that was indicated by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
when he told us that the Ummah, that the Muslims, they are like one body. They are like one body united together. If a part of it is sick, then the other part of it will complain of pain and grief. The other part of the body will feel the weakness in the Ummah. The Muslims, we will feel and complain of the weakness that is found within family structures and communities around the world. And this, brothers and sisters, is a major part of why we are, as a Muslim Ummah, where we are today. So, from this week, inshallah ta'ala, we will begin a new series discussing the family structure in Islam, the role of the family members and the manners that they should have with one another, and we will begin with Sirat al-Rahm, which is enjoining the family ties, or joining the family ties, keeping the family together. Brothers and sisters, joining the family ties is an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep your relationships with your family members, your relatives. It is a religious obligation. A religious obligation, what that means is, if you do not do it, you are sinful. If you do not maintain the relationships that you have with your family members, your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your uncles and your aunties, your cousins, your children, all that are in your family, if you do not maintain that relationship, it is considered to be sinful. This is an order from Allah as he says in the Quran, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dil qurba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is saying, Verily Allah enjoins upon you al-ihsan. He enjoins upon you justice and al-ihsan, benevolence. To be benevolent in your practice of Islam. Giving help to kith and kin, to the family members. To help your family members is an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is considered to be part of joining the family ties. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids us from evil deeds, all that is prohibited by the Islamic law and all kinds of oppression and He admonishes us so that we may take heed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also ordered joining the family ties. In another very powerful verse when He says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَمْ وَبِنِ السَّبِيلِ وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verse in Surah An-Nisa and it's very interesting when you look at the verse as it begins with something that seems unrelated he says worship Allah وَعْبُدُ الله وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, Worship Allah and do not associate partners in His worship. Which is something that we just were discussing in the previous weeks. The sources of our unity come from our worship in Allah azza wa jal. The first thing and the last thing that we need in this world is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first thing to enter into faith, into al-Islam, is the ibadah of Allah alone and without partner. And the last thing that we need to go into the akhirah, to the next life, is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without partner. La ilaha illa huwa. That there is no God but Him. So in this verse, immediately after this, the most important thing in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ And with your parents, be benevolent, be kind, be respectful, be loving. وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ And then he goes on. And with those who are close in their relation, your kinsmen, your family members, the orphans, the poor, the neighbor who is of near kin, your neighbor that is a relative, and then the neighbor who is a stranger, the companion by your side, the wayfarer, the one that you meet, and those whom your right hand possesses, Verily, Allah does not like such who are proud and boastful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, again is reiterating and ordering us to join family ties. We can see from these two verses, and the Quran is filled 
brothers and sisters, with ayat, ordering us to maintain our family structure. We can see from this the importance of the family unit, the importance of the family in al-Islam, the importance of the family in society, and that which will later lead us into the hereafter. Brothers and sisters, when you look at the Prophet wasallam, the best of mankind, joining the family ties was sunnah before Islam. Joining the family ties was sunnah of the Prophet wasallam before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated joining the family ties. Before he made it an obligation. And we can see this from the story of the Prophet wasallam when he received the first words of revelation. When he was away praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the cave and was visited by the angel Jibreel alayhi salam. And in that moment, that frightening moment, filled with anxiety, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam unsure of what was happening. And he sought comfort with his wife Khadija radiallahu anha, looking for support, moral support, even physical support. What was the response of his wife when she explained what happened? She said to him, Kalla abshir, fa wallahi la yukhzik Allahu abadan. Innaka la tasil al rahim. In these words, Khadija radiallahu anha, she says to the Prophet, sallam, she says, Glad tidings to you, congratulations. For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never abandon you or belittle you or dishonor you. And then she says, For you join the family ties. And she begins to praise the Prophet sallam, and remind him of his good qualities. The first quality that she mentioned of praiseworthy qualities was that of joining the family ties. The Prophet wasallam, even before Islam, was encouraging people to stay close with their families, to nurture the relationship that they had with their relatives. Something that today we see in the Muslim household is upside down. Constantly at battle, constantly in situations of stress and strain, family members back and forth at each other's throats for sometimes the smallest and most insignificant of things. Even before Islam, brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ was enjoining the family ties. So you can see, this was the manner of the Prophet ﷺ, and it continued on after the message of Islam was delivered. And this is found in an authentic narration reported in Musnad Imam Ahmed. One of the companions came to the Prophet ﷺ before accepting Islam. And he said, I was looking for the Prophet ﷺ while he was hiding in Mecca. As you know that the initial stages of the call of Islam, the Prophet ﷺ and the few believers were in hiding out of fear of reprisal out of fear of being hurt physically and financially, of being tormented by the Quraysh, because they did not like the call of the Prophet ﷺ. So this man, he found the Prophet ﷺ. And the hadith goes, قُلْتُ لَهُ مَا, ما أَنْتَ So the man he found that the Prophet ﷺ says, what, not who, he said, what are you? The Prophet ﷺ, he says, Nabiyun, I'm a prophet. So he says, وَمَن nabi And what, what is a prophet? And so he responded and said, Rasulullah, the messenger of Allah. So the man, he says, وَمَن arsalak, Who sent you then? The Prophet ﷺ, he says, Allahu Azza wa Jal, Allah the mighty and majestic sent me. Then he says, بِمَاذَ arsalak? He says, what did he send you with? And the Prophet ﷺ responded and said, بِأَن I was sent so that the relations would be joined, the family ties would be joined together. And that bloodshed would stop. And that the roadways would become safe. And that the idols would be destroyed. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be worshipped alone and without partner. This was the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The beginning when he is explaining this message 
it was to join the family ties. At the very, very beginning of Islam, it was an obligation to keep relations with your family members. Now, as we know from the legislation of Islam, some things were introduced later on. Like the salah, for example. The prayer was not introduced until many, many years after Islam was delivered. Fasting was not made an obligation until they were in Al-Madinah. Alcohol was not prohibited until years after the message began. But the first things that were obligated was to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to join the ties of kinship. It was something that has been constant from the very beginning of this message. And when you look at the explanation of this, in the way that Islam came about in stages. You can see some of the great wisdom. Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziya rahimahullah, he talks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed his message in stages. And he says the first stages that were revealed of Islam were the most important things. The most important things were revealed first. So from amongst the most important things in Islam is to maintain and join the relationship that you have with your family members. Brothers and sisters, it is a unanimous agreement that we can find amongst the great scholars of Islam in regards to the obligation of joining the family ties. There is no one that would dispute this. There is no one that would tell you it is not wajib or fard. These are from the most obligatory affairs in our faith. And it is one of the greatest responsibilities that we have to bear the burden. We have to carry the weight of keeping our family together. And we can see this as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Tahreem, Ya ayyuha al-ladhina amanu, qu anfusakum wa ahlikum naran wa quduha al-nasu wal hijara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, save yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stones. Save yourselves and you are responsible for saving your families as well. This is our responsibility. It is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeing to our families, keeping our families together. Brothers and sisters, I say this as a reminder. 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 I بسم الله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Brothers and sisters, what is this? What does it mean? The real meaning of joining the family ties, the practical application of this. What does it mean to join the family ties and how do we know when we have fulfilled this obligation? as the obligation is in various different levels and forms. Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah, he discusses or he talks about what it means to join family ties when he was explaining some of the ahadith found in Sahih Muslim. And he said, joining the family ties is showing love, respect and kindness to your relatives. In accordance to the situation, the condition of those that are in the family. He says, so sometimes, joining the family ties, it will be by giving money. Sometimes, joining the family ties, it will be by visiting them and seeing them. Sometimes, joining the family ties will be by saying, Assalamu alaikum, by speaking to them, giving them good words and good advice. So, to clarify this, I'll give you a beautiful example. Many of you can relate to this. Either... If you have a brother or a sister and they are in need financially and right now many people are in need as the situation of the economy has become uh, grim. So you have a brother or a sister or a relative and they need money, they need financial support. Here, the opportunity has presented itself that you join the family ties by giving them money that which, you, that which they need so long as you have whatever it is to give. 
Here in this situation, the scholars of Islam, they say that it becomes an obligation upon you to give that money to keep the family ties together. When a person is in need from your family, it becomes obligatory, it becomes a wajib, a fard upon you to help them out. Look at the beauty of Islam, the support that is found within the family structure of the Muslim. That they are there to help one another, to aid one another. This is a foreign concept for many cultures and societies. Many cultures and society, including the one that we live in, for the most part. It is very rare to find that family members, brothers and sisters, mothers and, 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 mothers and fathers and their offspring, up until a certain point, they no longer help. They no longer provide. But you're alone. You're responsible. You handle yourself. You handle your own thing. I'm not responsible for you, but in Islam, the relationship is built around community. Family is what brings strength to a community. So to keep the family together and strong keeps the community strong. So it is an obligation that you help in this moment and that you give the money. If you do not, it is considered to be sinful. So this is money. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's they need to be visited. Maybe it's they need to be advised. They need to be spoken to. They need to be reminded about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are drifting away from faith. They are not upholding their religious responsibilities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is from silat al-rahm and joining the family ties to talk to them, to speak with them, to advise them. And this goes in the order of closeness in relationship. So if it is your mother or your father, and you are the son or the daughter, then it is most obligatory upon you. If it is your brother, it is more obligatory upon you than their cousin. And so on and so forth as we look at the relationships and their levels. It is also an obligation if someone does not stand up to their responsibility. For example, the brother, this story that I gave you, the brother and his brother. One brother who is rich and his brother is poor and needs money. So one brother, he's stingy, the rich one, he says, no, I'm not going to help you. Go get a job. Go figure it out for yourself. I'm not going to give you anything. The responsibility then moves to the next one closest in relationship, the cousin or the uncle or whoever it may be. So this is something that is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and something that strengthens the family unit, thus strengthening the Muslim community. So brothers and sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften our hearts towards our family and to soften our hearts to overlooking their faults and reconnecting with those that have drifted away and those that we have cut off. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in authentic hadith, لَيْسَ الْوَاصِلُ بِالْمَكَافِ That the one that enjoins the family ties, it is not done through mutual joining. Joining the family ties is not done when everything is good. Right? And this is what is perceived most of the time or the easy way. When everyone is happy with one another, you join the family ties. You help one another out. You are happy with each other. He says, وَلَكِنَّ الْوَاصِلُ الَّذِي إِذَا قُطِعَتْ رَحِمُهُ وَصَلَهَا He says, the real joining of family ties is when they have been cut, when someone from your family cuts you off and you try to rejoin and reconnect. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength to reconnect with the family members that we have been cut off from. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة